Apple finally released iPad OS 17 and iOS 17 and there are a bunch of new features it's added that mean you can make the iPad so much better. I love a bit of productive well-designed tech on this channel and so in this video I'm going to break down the new iPad updates you should know about and how you can use them day to day to truly make the most of your iPad for productive work and play. From new lock screen design and interactive widgets to some great new productive features in Notes, Stage Manager, Freeform and all the rest, there's some real beauties. Hi, I'm Simon, this is Better Creating and thank you to one of my most loved iPad apps, Shortform, for sponsoring part of this video. Now, first up, iPad OS 17 is available to anyone with an iPad Pro second generation or later, an iPad Air third generation or later, the standard iPad sixth generation or later, or the iPad mini fifth generation or later. The first big update most of us will have been excited for is the addition of better customization options, notably for your lock screen. Now this came to the iPhone in iOS 16 and now comes to the iPad in iPad OS 17. Now allowing us to have far more control over the look and feel of our device's lock screen, including setting wallpapers for different focus modes, animated wallpaper options that interact with the lock screen information, and most excitingly for me, custom lock screen widgets. But more on that in a moment. So to get started with setting wallpapers, we can either hold on the lock screen and unlock it with your face, or we can go into settings, wallpapers, and then you're able to add new. So if we click into here, we get a load of really exciting options on the screen. So we've got suggested photos that will do things like overlay you, which you can adjust, which is really nice. We could can pinch it to overlay it. What I'm really excited about though is this. You kind of have this ability to zoom in and out and it'll actually animate if you use one to the other on like lock screen and home screen, which I really like. And then they've added a load of other nice things, some pride images, some collections, and you've even got emojis, which you can actually click into here and kind of edit the emojis. Pretty out there. Um, some nice color ways down here, which are cool. But personally, my approach is to use my packs because I've designed them to look a certain way. Do you want to make your iPad set up or iPhone look like this. These are icons from my iOS and Notion design packs, a complete set of minimal iOS icons and covers in black and white and transparent gradient sets of the icons that even allow you to use the native Apple shortcut colors to custom colorize any icon you want into the color that you want perfect for that custom iPad look. Check them out via the link in the description and make sure you check out my guide video on how to customize your iPad and iPhone with them as well. Now you should be aware that the process of customizing in iOS and iPadOS is more of a pleasing hack than a kind of plug and play product, but if you have a few hours to enjoy getting stuck into it and making your iPad look like this, jump in and have a go. So I'm gonna now make a dark mode and then we can set them as a pair, but I'm actually gonna customize my home screen. I've actually got a gradient that we've built so it matches with the icons that we've created. So I'm gonna add that into there. That is gonna be my new wallpaper set. So that's my light mode with the icons included in it, which I think is really good. There's some widgets that we've made, but what's really nice now on the iPad is we go up to here, click into the focus modes, you can create light and dark mode versions of focus. So if I now edit the settings of dark mode, I can choose the dark mode lock screen and I can edit this to just select, for example, I mean the widgets aren't quite right, but you get the idea, some dark mode pages that I've created. I've got a whole video on how to do this. And then if we go back out and turn dark mode on, it will automatically change the lock screen. Here's how to set up widgets on your lock screen and how I've set mine up uh, to get to my favorite quick actions. So we're gonna go into settings and wallpapers and click on the focus mode we wanna look at. And here we will see we have add widgets on the left. So I can click onto that and we'll get loads of options. So I can click in here and find things. Or weirdly, you have to have plugged the keyboard in to do that. You can't do it on the screen. I find that a little bit annoying, but there we go. Um, so there's a number of options that are already here, um, but my favorite options within this 
have got to be to start with. I'm going to go to calendar and I can see various options for the calendars, which is really nice. So we have things like next event, which I'm actually going to pick because I really like it. So I'm going to drop it in there. What's really nice about this bar is you can kind of place it in any spot. So it's not just having to stack. There are so many great options. I particularly like, and I recommend using this, the shortcuts options. So if you find shortcuts in here, you'll be able to drag a button into the system and then from here, you can select any one of your shortcuts, which will open apps. So for example, I've created a load of things that open specific things, uh, but they could also do things like a new journal entry in Notion. Really cool. I click on my new journal entry, it'll open the iPad, jump straight to Notion, and allow me to journal in it. Now that is a really brilliant solution to your home screen, so something to consider using shortcuts in it. Now, if you wanted to, you could use something like Widgie, where you can create specific widgets that will then edit within it, which I think is pretty cool, so you can kind of set a certain look. So we've got a calendar. I'm gonna search Notion. Now, for some reason, and I don't know why, I'm unable to type into the search bar. I don't know what that's about, uh, so maybe there's a bug that Apple need to fix on it, but that's something to keep an eye on, right? Anyway, uh, you can find loads of great things in the list. And I'm also gonna use one of my favorite apps, which is Minimalist. It's a really beautiful, simple task manager that we can use to drop different things in. So for example, you can just have your current list in there. I'm gonna take my to-do list and I'm gonna drop that in there. And you can also click on here and set them to be transparent, vertical, and show completed on there, which is rather nice. And what's really cool now about widgets is that we're able to actually edit them within it. My next one to add is going to be in Chrome, where you can search for things as well, and you can do a direct Google search using that system, which I, I think is pretty fantastic. I'm actually gonna go with the direct Google search and drop that in to there. And actually, I might pop my Google search down the bottom. Really nice. But finally, I'm gonna drop in my temperature for the day. I'm going to drop that down the bottom along with my journaling shortcut. So I'll click done. We can go back out. You can also do things like edit reminders or uh, to-do lists within the actual sidebar, which is rather good. Uh, and a good example of that actually is if I use this to-do list, drop that in there as an example. If we click done on that, take ourselves back out to the lock screen. And on here, I can now actually check tasks off like that, which is really fantastic. I can also quickly add tasks by going into Minimalist. So I really love the look and feel of how this now works. And with that icon pack, apps like Minimalist, you can end up with a really beautiful home screen and be able to do things like jump to your favorite apps and journal. Pretty cool in Notion. Oh, and speaking of widgets, you can now move widgets anywhere on the home screen not related to adjacent apps. It used to have to be stacked up in an order, but we have a little bit more control now over where we place them, which I think is a really good thing. So let's talk stage manager and app pairing. So stage manager has had some simple but super needed updates that really make it so much better, my friends. I don't know why I did that. Now, if you don't know about it, stage manager mode is most easily turned on by just swiping down from the top right of an applications menu and then clicking on the little three dots next to the screen there. Now, you can uh, turn the iPad into a slightly more desktop style view, essentially, with this. It's particularly good on a second monitor. Now, in the last version of this, me and some people I knew, mostly we just turned it off again pretty quickly after realizing that the placement and resizing options were actually a bit too limited. But, hooray! In 17, now it is a new iteration, we can actually resize the apps and move them around far more freely using the curved line in the bottom corner. And I think we might have Apple Vision Pro development to thank for that, looks a bit similar, right? Now the fastest way to add an app in Stage Manager view is now to hold shift and then pull another app alongside it. Or if you don't have your keyboard with you for fast app pairing for specific taps, you can now add a new app in Stage Manager by just tapping and holding on the three dots at the top of the window and finding another from there. Now, another little trick that's also worth telling you about, which whilst it's not new, is worth knowing. Remember that you can enter full screen from an app like this in Stage Manager when you need to. You just 
have to click the dots, go into it, and you can come in and out. Now, what's nice is that Windows in Stage Manager are now so much easier to move around and swap between without being so limited in your options. And I personally love this view for my main use case, probably on the iPad these days, which is research and note-taking. Okay, there are some great upgrades for reading, note-taking and research. My favorite app for this remains a combination of Apple Notes or Good Notes, of which there is a new version, Good Notes 6, check it out, there for note-taking. And then I really love the Readwise Reader and Command Browser for gathering quotes and references via Readwise on the iPad. Check out my other videos on that if you want to see more. Now there are some more amazing new developments for Apple Notes, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, I'm going to take a little pause to tell you about another way that I'm loving using the iPad, and that is to read. Yes, okay, I do own a Kindle, right? But actually, I'm finding that I'm reading way more now on the Kindle app on the iPad, and it's probably because I just have it with me a lot more. Now, I have recently been rereading Principles by Ray Dalio on how to make kind of better decisions in life and work. And since I don't always have time to reread a book in full, I've actually been doing that by reading a summary on Shortform, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Now, if you haven't heard of Shortform by now, they are the world's best service that summarizes books. It's great on an iPad and they do really great book summaries, but they are way more than just summaries. In fact, they also include if we look into Principles by Ray Dalio, a one-pager that will summarize the key ideas in the book. There's a chapter-by-chapter -chapter, uh, guide throughout the whole thing, and there's even exercises that you can follow in order to engage deeper and reflect on the content of that book. Those key ideas are all in that one-pager, so you get a complete view of the book. But the other great thing is they actually kind of approach their summaries with a little bit more of an critical eye. So they will highlight when views may have become outdated or disproven, or offer alternative perspectives from other writers in short form notes. And that's just really good to get a balanced viewpoint when we read. So while short form doesn't replace actually reading the book. It has been a game changer for me in two key ways. First, if I've been recommended a book, I tend to jump on short form on my iPad to check out the summary and see if I like it. Or I can use it to recap ideas from the key points from a book that I've read in the past. So if any of that sounds up your street, give short form a try via my link in the description and see if it can help you unlock the next level of your work, or business or personal growth, whatever it is. Go on my link, shortform.com forward slash better creating. You'll get five days unlimited access and then 20% off the annual subscription. So that's going to be good, isn't it? Thanks Shortform for sponsoring the video. So back to some Apple Notes updates and PDFs. We can now enter quick information in PDFs because Apple's new iOS now uses machine learning to identify fields in a PDF and then insert text to fill it in. You can do this directly in the Files app, so get to know the Files app. Now the same goes for adding and editing and annotating PDFs directly now in Apple Notes, which I think is a brilliant addition. Even better, you can collaborate with others in a shared note in Apple Notes Live. So sit next to your friend on your iPad and get to work together, I suppose. Now, it's also now possible to link between notes. It's a bit like having a wiki. So you can tap and hold next to the cursor and then tap the add link or just use command K on the keyboard. After you click done, it will land inside your note and then you can click through to the other note. And on that note, a click on the subscribe button would be an excellent choice too right now. Yeah, it's another poor segue, I know, but the good reason is that there's loads more great ideas, tools, and tech on this channel to help you make your best life happen. Okay, let's shoot through some more great additions that you might have missed on the iPad in iPadOS 70. Webcam support. Yes, we can now plug in and automatically recognize an external camera on the iPad particularly webcams via USB-C. The iPad will recognize cameras on external monitors if they have a camera and third-party webcams. I recently got this one, which is the uh, Opal C1 4K. Um, it's working beautifully with the iPad and I'm really enjoying it. Check out my video on that if you want to. And it also solves the annoying issue for me of having that kind of camera off to the side when in landscape mode, which just looks weird when you're talking to people. Now, the one potential issue to be aware of is that iOS doesn't support most third Third party webcam applications. So sometimes just adjusting settings like exposure and white balance will be in the lap of the gods, but so far so good with the Opal, 
I'll put it in the link in the description if you wanna see it. Now, Spotlight has also got some changes this year. If you don't know, it's essentially the amazing search function of the iPad. You just swipe down from the top. It's very good as a quick way of actually opening apps. You should use it more probably. Now, what's great is that you can now toggle things on and off directly in that search bar. So if you find Bluetooth or maybe you wanna set a timer, you can do that in Spotlight. It's the little things, right? Now, Siri also gets a little improvement. Uh, you don't have to now keep saying, hey Siri, every sentence. You can just chat to him, or her, or them. I don't know, it's AI. I didn't catch that. Freeform gets new tools and a better collaborative view. It has now more tools such as a new crayon, a highlighter, a ruler, and even a calligraphy pen. And if you are collaborating with others uh, on it, you can actually see them moving around the shared workspace in real time. I personally haven't been using Freeform much, but by the looks of it, I probably should check it out because it looks like a really great app. Oh, and great news, Apple Health is now added and updated in iPad OS 17. Great to see it on the iPad for a more comprehensive view of all of the usual features. So make sure you check that out and take care of yourself. So iPad OS 17 has definitely added a lot more functionality to the iPad for day-to-day -day use. But let me know what you make of these updates in the comments. And if you wanna go further with making the most of your iPad, I actually recommend that you click on this video next. Or if you don't know about it yet, I actually have a load of other great productivity and tech tools to make your life better on this channel. Not least my complete notion second brain system that you can tour down there. It would be great if you subscribed here too, and I'd better get back to creating. See ya.